morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Folari. Um, my guest this morning, uh, Chief Dr. Fasi Yusuf, former Commissioner for Information and Culture. Uh, I, I like to say in the old uh, Ogun State, and he says, which one is old? Ogun State is Ogun State, but it was in the days of uh, the <laughs> Milads, <laughs> the military administrators, and um, communications expert. Welcome, Dr. Fasi. Thank, thank you very, very much, much Yori. All right, then. My pleasure. And, and then, um, Mr. Shei Adeyemo, Public Affairs Analyst, and um, Iwa, the gentleman, Niwa. But actually, it's not that Iwa. It's inside what Africa. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you very much for coming on. Uh, the Emir, the former Emir of Kano, is still very much in the in the news. Yesterday, we, we we took it. We took our conversation from the point of view of the Emir's, you know, uh, speech just before um, he was led out of the uh, palace. Uh, that look, whatever Allah decrees, uh, I'm paraphrasing now. Whatever Allah decrees, he's cool with it. Uh, and then he had enjoined every, all family members and everybody who, you know, was his own, so to speak, to pay obeisance to the new emir and um, just make sure that everything was cool. But as you now know, his lawyers have decided to contest aspects of uh, the whole situation. Um, legal luminary uh, Femi Falano S.A.N. Uh, has been reported uh, saying that um, what has happened, uh, the, ban the banishment, I don't know if it's the banishment part or the whole entire operation, um, cannot really stand in a court of law. We'll look at that and um, the fact that this is a relic really of our colonial times and here we are, um, there are those who are saying, need we be going back to those colonial, t colonial times? Then we can say, have we ever left those colonial times? You know, depending on um, um, what perspective you want to look at it from. But we, we have something from um, the lawyers. See from the Emir through his chief of staff, we are directed to take legal action to challenge the legality of the Emir's detention and banishment. We have the fine view that this action is illegal and unconstitutional. Section 35 of the Constitution of our country guarantees every citizen the right to personal liberty. We call on the authorities, in particular the Inspector General of Police, <coughs> the Director General of the Department of State Services, and the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice to ensure the immediate release of His Highness Muhammad II so that he can be reunited with his family. We are concerned about the personal safety and security of His Highness at the remote location where he's being held and wish to call on all well-meaning Nigerians and the international community to bring their influence to bear to ensure that His Highness Muhammad II regains his liberty immediately and to guarantee his safety and security. Okay, so that's a clip right there, lawyers to um, the former emir of um, Kano. Uh, now, the emphasis in the lawyer's uh, comment there was not on the dethronement itself, uh, but on interfering with his freedom. L l let's look at that. Um, newspaper reports that we've read say that the former emir had preferred had chosen to go to Lagos, but it transpired that, no, we're not allowed to do that. So whereas your family can indeed go to Lagos, you, sir, will be going um, to Nasarawa. And even at Nasarawa, the conditions were, were horrible, you know, according to reports, just, just horrible. Um, even the EMA, I understand, has said that one of the reasons is had to be moved from the first you know, uh, landing location, uh, yeah. location was that um, we don't have facilities here. Um, now, why have, what, what, look, it's one thing <coughs> to disown, and that has been done. But then going beyond that, the whole matter of one, his freedom, his, his, his right to, to, to movement, his right to access within reason. Uh, nobody's saying he has that right includes moving right into Kano and, you know, that, nobody's saying that. But no, his, no, no, you cannot even say that. You cannot even say that. Yori, the fact that somebody was deposed or dethroned does not mean that uh, it will uh, evacuate uh, the, the society or the environment. It's a human being. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, I mean, but, but, but how about the, 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 um, uh, the, the concept that, look, you can't be in the same domain, that is your, in the area of your former domain, when there is a new ruler. You can't be there. It's, that's hogwash. It has no basis. It lacks foundation. It lacks uh, decency. It lacks 
uh, anything good that you can think of. But, number, but one, number one, is there any law that says if I were head of state and I, uh, I'm deposed, I can no longer stay in that environment? And uh, you talk about the king. Uh, king is, you know, by the constitution of this country, the king is below the, the chairman of the of a local government. Yes. So, no matter how powerful that king is. Well, well that's so, according to the book. Yes, yeah, yeah, according know, to the book. Yes. That, that's according so, to the book. So, that, if, uh, if, that, that an emir or a sultan yeah. is lower than the chairman of his, um, of his um, emirate. No, no. Uh, well, that's what the I'm law saying, says. By protocol. Okay. By protocol. Okay. By law. Mm. Practice may be another thing. But the fact that, is there any law that says, if I were king of my of Ikusi, and I've been deposed, is there any law that says I must not remain in that environment? But it has been the because practice. Because chapter, listen. It chapter, is the tradition. Chapter 4 of the Constitution, especially Section 35, Fundamental Right. Mm -hmm. I'm entitled to my liberty. The fact that you removed him from office does not mean that my life will be extinguished. No, it doesn't. Yes. But, so, but pragmatism. What is, what is pragmatism? Pragmatism uh, does seem okay. to dictate So pragmatism that will make the, uh, the State Executive Council, without following due process, to depose an email without looking at the implications of such a thing, or without following due process, and at the same time, depriving that person of his liberty, of his freedom, and disorganizing his own family and all the rest. Mm. I mean, what about the mental torture? Well, quite frankly, I don't know what, that we're worrying about those kind of things, by which I mean that this clearly is a punitive measure. Let me bring this to you, Shay. I'm coming mm. back. Let me bring this to you, Shay. Um, look, there are those who will say this is personal. Mm. Yeah, but whatever. They followed some laws. In fact, I understand that where the laws would have appeared to be a, something of an impediment. Uh, some adjustments were made, proper, you know, legal adjustments were made or in the process of being made. Um, but I, I have heard that one of the things that the lawyers, if they do indeed go to court, uh, might be speaking about, I heard it from uh, Femi Falano, who is not, as of this moment, one of his lawyers, that he wasn't given any chance to to defend himself. To, to defend himself. Mm -hmm. Nobody heard from him. From him yeah. Everything was one way. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're, I think we're talking not about the dethronement now, not mm -hmm. the dethronement, but the whole matter about the whole punitive aspect of it and taking an emir, a former emir, mm -hmm. uh, to such an abysmal place. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? I think it's appropriate that we question it. And I like the fact that the lawyers have appealed to Nigerians and well-meaning people all over the world to please stand up to this. Because, you see, if we continue to allow things like this to keep happening, it will keep happening. Because you will have people refer to the fact that, okay. oh, it's been happening all so over the world. So you're considering the fact that there is nothing new about this particular no, it, instance. Obviously, it's been the way it has been it's from the First Republic. Obviously. When yeah. I, was but, it our law that first of all it was our It was our law. It was our law. Was, was it the, the guy who first? Alafi Yes, in 1955. But you the truth of the matter is whether it's old or not, the, the fact is, is this right? It's a colonial relic. And, and even the colonial masters never instituted it in any law. You know, so... Can we or should we continue to allow wrong to, to, to thrive? Because, because for me, this is a wrong. And well, you know, the, matter, the whole question of wrong, yeah. I mean, many lawyers, there's one right beside you, yeah. and there are many of them watching. Mm -hmm. uh, wrong will be as determined by the law or as defined by the law. Absolutely. So, so this is the point. So, the, so some things that we would say is wrong, yeah. the law will say, they don't see anything wrong. But unfortunately, with it. this particular case, none have been situated in Nigerian law. There is no place in Nigerian law that anybody is allowed to be banished or to be kept in a place in isolation because he was a former king or traditional ruler. None in our Nigerian law. I mean, he's yes, a lawyer. You're, you're, look, you're in, the, in the case of uh, Yakolo. Yes. Yes. Uh, of, uh, of the governor yes. of uh, KB State. Yeah. The Court of Appeal ruled that. What the governor did, or the government of uh, Kebbi State Kebbi did, did yeah. was unknown to the Constitution of the Republic of Nigeria, Nigeria and should be condemned yeah. by all. So if you look at what the colonial governor, urban government did, 
I mean, from uh, the the other Bini, the Ulo of, of, of Wari, yeah. the oh, Emir of Baushi, yeah. and, and many others. Yes, yeah. many, many. And many others. Alaki, the yeah, Oba of Lagos, yes. uh, Kosoko, yes. and, yes. yeah. and many others. They were jungle justice. Punitive. Very punitive. But now, even during the democracy, it happened. But at the same time, the court has condemned in its entirety. Over and so, over and over so, again. Such an action. Yeah. But why does so, it persist? Why does it persist? And since we have because, a, a president because, of the court saying... Because power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts. corrupts absolutely. absolutely. And again, that reminds me of uh, Ajimobi, that the constant authority will determine what is good and what is bad. And that is very sad. That we don't look at the constitution. The constitution is the grand norm. And the constitution says that Anything that is inconsistent uh, with the constitution is not allowed void to the extent of its inconsistency. But most of our leaders haven't assumed that power. They believe that power is ad definitum. Mm. But unfortunately, power is temporary. Mm. Life itself is temporary. Mm -hmm. Today, your idea is governor. Tomorrow, you'll be temporary. If you remember what even uh, Abu Bakar Rimi said, He said, look, we are, we are, we are the government. We can decide yeah. to do he's what... A, he's a public officer. Yes. Yes. He's a public officer. An address is a, it's a, so, so, so it's below the commissioner. It's blah, blah, blah. But we must realize that, look, in everything we do, we must follow the constitution, no matter how imperfect it is. Secondly, we must believe, we must know that power belongs to the almighty God. He gives us away where he wants. And he removes it at any time. Which is exactly what former Emir Sanusi said. Said. But the issue we are talking about today is the illegality, that is the constitutionality of the action of the governor to banish him. Mm -hmm. No government, no government yeah. has the power to ban. Yeah. You also remember the case of Shugaba and uh, the federal government, Chagari and Chagari. When the man was taken outside uh, Nigeria mm. and dumped in uh, was it Shad or mm. the Jail Republic? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And the court ruled that look, the president or the federal government had no power to do such a thing. You know, look, I, I, I don't want to stretch this too far, mm. but we have a situation where um, even Boko Haram, we, 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 we've been hearing that former Boko Haram members, you know, are, 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 are integrated. They, they're being reintegrated. Uh, the Minister of Information, you know, was here and he said, look, they are Nigerians too, yeah. no matter how, you know, difficult that is to swallow. Yeah. They are Nigerians yeah. too. And so we, we, we have to be careful. We yeah. treat them, in a, that is when people were criticizing. Yeah. That, how can you do this? Now, we have a former emir. Yeah. You work it out such that he lands in a quote-unquote no man's land. Yeah. So much so that even his host in Nasarawa said, said that, look, we, we, this, this, this is uncomfortable for us. Mm -hmm. There are no roads, there are no facilities, there's no electricity. So it, it looks like it's one thing to dethrone a person. It's another thing to want to humiliate him also entirely. Maybe this is what former President Obasanjo meant when he said that you have paid the price. We, we didn't understand it. But the point is even this. Does the territory of Kano state government extend to Nasawa state? Well, you know, this goes back to the very first point that we made. I had said that it's sort of conventional wisdom that you take away a deposed um, uh, uh, ruler, a ruler uh, from his domain. Why? Or, why? Be, be, well, it, you, you understand. It stands to reason. It's, no. It's, no. What's the reason? Is that? <laughs> it's illogical. It's unreasonable. <laughs> you can't have perhaps... In our Who told you that? Where, where is it written? Uh, it is common wisdom that you can have a former uh, ruler in the same area with the new ruler, okay. especially as, you know, you, you, he's they're alive. Like they're former president should not stay in Nigeria. No, these ones were not deposed. They had terms. What are those that were deposed? And that's what we're talking about now. Uh, what was deposed? Go was deposed. I fancy you're stretching this. You know. No, you're, no, no, you're stretching this. You said, you said two rulers cannot be a, I mean, a foreign ruler, which, and a ruler. Which is the conventional wisdom uh, that, that we, it, no matter I whether it's that decide, wisdom, but, 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 no, wisdom I mean, you for, 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 for me. But the, uh, point, the, yeah. the, the point that we might want to comment on, if we want, is, yeah. is there's a definite punitive aspect to all of this. That's the to, point. To, 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 to rubbish entirely. In it. It's, it's the two things. The most important thing you can do is that 
okay, sir, you're no more the ruler. No, That's sorry, that. let me tell you. Now, you see, it, there are a lot of mischief in some of the laws in this country, especially in some of the states. If they knew, because the court, the court of appeal has already ruled, Look, and we, every attorney general of the, of, of the state, has a copy of the constitution, and it's supposed to be the custodian of that constitution, as far as the state is concerned. It should have advised that even if the the Emirate law of uh, Kano State allows for such a thing. Mm -hmm. I pointed out that, look, this is unconstitutional and it's not avoid. Let, let, let's hear the Attorney General of Kano. We, I think we have a recording of that. Um, let, let, let's hear no. the law. Uh, when it comes to judicial pronouncements, it depends on the facts and circumstances of each case. So it depends on the facts in the case of the Jokolo and the pact uh, in the case of uh, Emir of Kano, uh, Sunusi, uh, the comparison between these two cases and the report from the security report uh, by the security people, uh, the police and the DSS. It is that uh, comparison that will solve the problem and until we get the report why he's been taken, then we, we rely on that particular authority. But uh, I, I cannot distinguish the two cases now it is not the directive of Kano State Government. It is not a decision of Kano State Government. The decision by Kano State Government is just to remove the EMEA. But uh, all these actions are purely based on security uh, reasons. So the justification of such a, a decision will better be given by the security personnel. Okay, so uh, I'm disappointed at that. The person speaking is a lawyer. I'm disappointed at him. Is the, the chief law officer of that state. So, how could he not be coming to the world to do what we tell us that uh, it was the decision of the security agencies? Who arranged with the national state government? Was he the commissioner of police? Was he the director of SSS in uh, the DC? Uh, the director of SSS asked EDG, director general of the state security service. The commissioner of police asked his boss, asked the inspector general of police. So, are they telling us that the inspector general of police? Are that you should be taken to another state? Well, I, I you heard it yourself. What I'm saying is that you heard it yourself. No, it's telling us what is highly um, irresponsible. It's a statement that is irresponsible. I should not be coming from a lawyer. Now, I'm now, disappointed. Okay. My concern is whatever has happened. Now, even if the IG decided to, you take know, we're not talking about the the the. the, 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 the Dethronement. The the we're talking no, about the, 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 put, the, put the that to one side. Yeah. On his liberty. On his liberty. liberty. Yes. It, has his liberty been infringed upon? Yes. Is his liberty being infringed upon? It, it, you know? Obviously, it is being infringed upon because now the, the Commissioner of Justice is saying to us that so this was not the government of Kanu that took this decision. That it was the so it was the security that decided to take him to take a place it. where there are no extra, roads, extra, no extra lights, judicial. no water. Extra judicial. Yes, Dijon. extra. Uh, yeah. So yeah. there's no Nigerian. So not to talk of a first class Emir. Emir that should be nobody, and mm. I mean nobody should be arrested without a warrant of arrested, uh, arrest, arrest and banished. And you know the question came up about uh, whether he was under arrest and it was a no, you're they not said under this, arrest. You know, you're not so under arrest. That question not was under raised. Yes. So, but so, so look, look, when you put all this together, is there any logic in all these things? Yeah, but not under arrest, yet removed from that state without his permission, yes. taken to an unknown, unknown land, yes. and get to that place, you discover that, look, it's, it's unhabitable. Mm -hmm. Now took him to another, another place. place. I now provided a helicopter to take him to the government house. So and uh, the name of uh, Nasara, the name of uh, Lafia, also agreeing to accommodate him. How do you put all this together? Do, do they come, do, I mean, do they, do they really make any sense? Do well, they, they make, they make the, the kind of sense of, in our environment here that is based on precedent that um, we started off by saying that this is not new. But the part of it, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how poorly or how well uh, deposed uh, traditional rulers have been treated in the past. But hearing that the former emir of Kano was taken to a place where there's no water, no light, no good roads, if those are, reports are correct, and that they're now looking for a better place for him, uh, it was reported on TVC yesterday. They went and the governor of that state said they were going to make rules. 
<laughs> they are going to repeat the road. They were, they were, they were they renovating the, the house. So, what's the business you know, of that state? You know, it, cannot stay it comes back to the personal aspect of this whole bruhaha saga. Yes, this whole saga. There's a personal aspect to it. It's not beyond dethroning. There's a personal aspect, some might surmise, which is illustrated in the uh, deliberate rubbing of you know the former emir's nose in the dust. You know. Uh, an attempt to humiliate him entirely. And um, I don't know if... Uh, people say the punishment must fit the crime. I don't know. No, the crime... Well, well, okay. well, what Sorry. the crime? That, uh, no, they, they've it, established it was, a crime of insubordination. 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 Was Ganuja not guilty of that too? If he were him, I mean, if I were him, and if I were a decent Nigerian, he should have resigned when that allegation of uh, uh, collecting bribe uh, there is ugly head. He should have resigned. But, but it wasn't proved. It wasn't pr The mere allegation, look, you must be like Caesar's wife. You must live above board. You must be transparent. I mean, nobody will just make an allegation against you if there's no some uh, elements of truth to them. But you know... Another, you, you, and then you, you, has he you, been able to prove that? But, uh, but you people say in law. You, you people say in law you, that you can't import matters from another case you're into you're a you're present case. You I'm lawyers are the people I'm that really, tell us. I've really, really tried him. I've been given a query. Has he answered any query? Oh, you mean the former emir? Yes. Yes. That's the point. That he was giving... No, was he queried? Did what? he have a chance to defend the, himself? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. He just sat down, the, the executive, and it is, it is on trafias. It is on constitution. The House of Assembly lacks the authority, lacks the legal power to do such a thing. To do such a thing. Well, here we are. We, it's happening before our very eyes. We're not talking, I think it needs to be emphasized, we're not talking about the... The legality or otherwise. The, the, the of dethronement the of the former emir. That's not... But the point is, the treatment of him as a Nigerian afterwards... Um, I made, I made the comparison maybe ridiculous with, with Boko Haram, for goodness sake. Those people that have done those things that they have done, mm. and you now say that, well, nevertheless... We can integrate them. So, so now right. they are flying around in planes. Now they, are, they have uniform, and we're saying it's because they're Nigerians and we have to be careful and we have... Uh, it, 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 it beggars understanding. People, people just don't understand it. Apart from the personal aspect of, of the whole thing between the former governor, I mean, sorry, the, the governor Ganduje and the former emir. Emir. The clearly, uh, it, it smacks of the, they personal saw, they, they, saw, they saw the Dukwashos former emir. Yes. As somebody that they should get rid of. And they don't want to run Kano. That's why... They did that. Yeah. And it's going to it's only going to be temporary. Okay. Sooner than later, he will regain his freedom and the Kano State government will pay dearly for it. Okay. You 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 use the word loquacious and I, I understand it. A lot of people have said that. Well, the former Emir, uh, I think the way they say it discreetly was that uh, uh, it was not shy of of offering or stating speaking true to the part of, 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 of Speaking his opinion in public, and the governor, the government of Kano, I think I've heard it in recent times again. We all were witnesses to it, but they've stated it that look, the man was criticizing the government of uh, Ganduje all over the place. Uh, instead of speaking with the emir discreetly, I mean, sorry, the governor, speaking discreetly. with the government discreetly, yeah. you find one very, very big forum. Mm. That's where you're criticizing us. And I think the one that really stung was the uh, uh, Chinese loan to bring light rail to Okano, mm. and the former emir was saying that in the face of the untrained excruciating economic e e e crisis and the lack of schools, mm. our children are roaming the streets. You think light rail is more important than educating our children? Reverend Dominic, good morning, sir. Good morning, Chief Yori. Thank you. Good morning, your guest in the house. Good morning, mm. Reverend. Yori, two weeks ago, somebody sent me a video clip. We are the governor of River State. We are coding the chiefs yes. and the kings in River State. I get so worried. My wife told me, don't die of Nigeria. <laughs> now, when they told the emir of Kano two years ago, I responded to my wife. He said, this is why I was worried that day. How could a governor of a state, a young man, coding the chiefs, the kings of his like schoolboy? I'm a pastor here. I have workers of my other me. I can't even talk to you, you know, the cleaners, the way 
Nigeria was talking to Foskaski. It go on and on and on in Nigeria. Uh, you, you say that if you banish an Emma, it's a domain. Uh, Ikejo was banished that day. Ikejo is still living in Imo State. And it comes to Imo State in the same area and go away. What is wrong with your solution? Go to his village in Kano somewhere and relax. What's wrong about that? Why do you bring 1940, 50 Colonel Masters treatment to our fathers? Which was a shame to us. And we judge our own children today in the 21st century. I don't want, let me say this. In Nigeria Palace, every matter lasts two weeks. I wish the lawyers are not threatened. I wish lawyers go to court and not threatened to go to court. So we can take this again and stop this embarrassment to our own people. This is one of the best practiced men in Africa. Mm. The world knows it. Why do we treat a man that way? Thank you. Thank you very much for calling in. Well, it, it, it unfortunately, uh, for most people, uh, is the way it is, but I imagine for because we've we've heard from the Kano State uh, government, we've heard the Attorney General, it's it's hardly any concern of theirs. That which they wanted to do, they have done. So they have removed the area. But, yeah, but yeah. anything that happened after that, they say you can't lay that at our doorstep. No, but do you, do you believe politicians? No, beyond that, is will you believe what the, the Attorney General said? It, it's, it's, it's it's actually beyond belief. It's it's a fact of we should not allow this to continue. This is something that is a terrible trend, and we must stop it. As a people, we must be very vocal about it. We must insist. We cannot allow this to pass now. Because if we hold on to something that the colonial masters did to us, and we're doing it to ourselves now in this century, not to just an ordinary Nigerian. Mm. Sanusi is not a regular Nigerian. Sanusi is someone that is renowned and a renowned economics that is known globally. And so if it could happen to him, then it could happen to anybody in Nigeria. So this is something that all of us must come together and, sh and, and, and we must stop it. Uh, Garba in uh, Makrodi, good morning, sir. Good morning, Okuyori. Thank you for calling in. Good morning to your guests over there. They are doing wonderful job, honestly. Good morning. I totally agree with your own submission on what they said and what Reverend Dominic said. Okuyori, let me tell you this. Former Edna Okano is getting more and more sympathizer. I'm telling you. So those that didn't even like it, people they are liking him now. They are beginning to love him now. I'm telling you this. Mark it, I said it. This is another a political undertone that will come into Nigeria. I always say tsunami that is coming. I'm seeing it. Because this man that they are saying, they are making him more popular. And he's coming after them, after all. I'm telling you this. You know, I don't know why. Why? Our real father <coughs> cannot come together and fight against this thing. I challenge the end of last year. If you allow your colleague, someone that is almost the same status with him, you accommodated, allowed to humiliate him in your head like that. What of this will happen to you tomorrow? So you should think our real fathers will come together and start against this. I'm challenging them now. Because if one of them will come out and speak the truth, at the end of the day, look at what they do to him. So why they to come back to you? I'm challenging them, all of them. They should come out mm. and stand against it. Right. Because if they allow our political leaders, elite in the society, start taking on our royal fathers, I'm telling you, I'm sorry. I'm uh, sorry for Nigeria. Have a nice day, Lego. Thank you very much. You're Mr. Right, you're, before I, you go on break, before you go on break, on break, before you go on break, you want to go on break now? I, want, I, I, I just have a statement to make. Make it in full when I come back from break. Okay. It's imminent. Uh, stay with us, please. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Still in studio with Dr. Fasi Yusuf and Mr. Sheyi Adeyemo. And we're looking at the treatment of the former Emir of Kano uh, following his um, dethronement, um, the appalling conditions as has been reported in the papers. Now, uh, the, 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 am I free to make my point uh, now? Uh, 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 oh, yeah, make your point. <laughs> Are you forgotten? Oh, yeah, make it. Yori, our leaders must remember that power is transient. 
I guess today, former Governor Ajumabi will be having to think about his court constituted authority, which led to his fall. Number two, the governor of River State must be very careful because you don't treat leaders or elders, custodians of our of our culture and tradition, and tradition. the way he's been treating them, like schoolboys, like Reverend Dominic said. You see, the day I had it on television, honestly, I buried my head in shame. Mm. Mm. And likewise, what is happening in the north, I think we need to be very careful. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, they run back to our traditional leaders, mm. our traditional rulers. Mm. Let, 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 me, let me pick it up from there first. Yes. Because um, at, uh, I heard the former Emir at one of the many, many uh, Mo Ibrahim you know, uh, the gatherings that they have. And um, the part of it that I want to bring out is that um, he was in, it was in response to an answer from the moderator that, look, they will turn to us to go quench fires mm. all over the place. But when we now say, look, the practices that you are engaging in that led to those fires, they don't want to hear that criticism. That is part of the problem. Uh, Yakub, Mr. Yakub, good morning, sir, and thank you for calling in. Yeah, good morning, Chief Yori. Uh, good morning to Dr. Fazi and uh, the other gentleman. Mr. Adeyemo. Mr. Adeyemo, sorry, thank you. Uh, uh, Chief Yori, I, Dr. Fazi, God bless you, sir. Uh, if he, and the rest of the people who call, it's only Dr. Yeah, Fassi. All, all of you. I'm I, anointed. I, I <laughs> because of what I'm about to say. Cool. Uh, if you see, I love, I love what uh, Dr. Fassi is doing to you this morning, if you uh, Dr. Fassi is giving it to you the way I love it. Because if, already, if you can believe a, a, a politician, I, you said the uh, Anthony General of uh, Cardo State has said it. If you already, don't ever believe these people. You see, they said Emir, a former Emir of Kano to that place in order to humiliate the man. Is he somebody that says the truth? What, what are we calling democracy? He said democracy is a governor of the people, by the people, and for the people. And then if somebody cannot say the truth, what is democracy there? If somebody tell you as a governor that as, as, as economics, he know the way you are going, if you are going to the wrong way. He had tried to, whether it's a secret, whether it's a publicly, he had tried. You can take it, you cannot take it. Whether you like it, take it. If you don't like it, don't take it. So if you not take money and then you send, you, you dethrone the person, yes, you did what you want to do. But why are you banished him? I said to your few yesterday, Chivori, I would like Emir Sanusi to challenge this in the court of law. Because if you dethrone somebody, I'm, a, I'm an indigenous of Kano State as, as a Sanusi is. If Sanusi is truly indigenous of Kano State, why did you banish him from his state? And then the natural state that you, you took him to, uh, period to yesterday. What did they, did they have any territory from Kano State to that place? What is this control of Ganduje in, in that other state for you banish him to that state? The Reverend Domis just said something earlier. If you watch that video of the uh, governor of River State, Chief Yori, you will find out that our emir, our hubbard, I don't know, maybe some of them go to the governor to seek for a contract and whatever. That is why they cannot be able to stand with them. And then, Dr. Fassi, I want to throw this question to you, sir. We do respect. Dr. Fassi, do you think our constitution needs to be refused in order for us to remove all these uh, hubbard so that they can be able to stand on their own. Not any governor will wake up tomorrow and then destroy anybody. And then this if, uh, incumbent uh, any of uh, Kano State today. What stop any governor coming again tomorrow now? And then if he does not like the faces of another area, he will destroy him as well. What, what are we going? Where are we going? Where are we heading to? Thank you and God bless you. Uh, thank, thank you very much. I, I think there is no, no doubt that there was a, there, there's a personal aspect to it. Now, the former emir was quite critical, unrepentant about it. Uh, and then the real reason was that disobedience to constituted authority, uh, insubordination, he never attended any events, uh, even going as far as in the last election, um, actually, he, he, if he didn't work for anybody, it didn't seem as if he was, um, he, he cast a kindly eye over the ambitions of the sitting governor now. Now, all of this is like it's payback time. 
Now, the, the law is, is, is what it is. Put the law out there. Now, rubbing a person's nose in it, even when a person is convicted of a criminal crime, he still has the right to decent human treatment. Like Yakub said, uh, we should be careful as a people not to desecrate our traditional values. Um, these people are the image or the people we can refer to as a custodian of our tradition. Now, if we get that careless and we treat them like we treat them, we're actually rubbishing ourselves. It could even, it might even create a backlash as uh, I think Garba for calling in for Macro D, well, I believe it was, uh, said that, look, I mean, seeing what they are seeing now, that this is what has befallen the former emir, uh, where he's being moved about, uh, it's, it, 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 it boggles the mind that w people that were arranging all of these events, I'm not saying go put him in a seven-star hotel somewhere, but no water, no light. It, 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 look, anywhere in the world, there are traditional authorities. That is our history. That's who we are. That's our story. We can't be that intoxicated with power that we would, with our hands, poncho all of the things that we can refer to mm. as our history. Yeah. Shouldn't, that, shouldn't that, be that, that bad. That's our collective uh, yeah. uh, the definition of that's our identity. Our you're, you're, Ken, you're, you're, Ken, you're, Kenny in Adoekiti. Good morning, ma'am. Or is it a man? Good morning, sir. Good morning, morning. ma'am. Yeah. Um, Okuyori... I just have um, just a question. I just want to ask if um, the governor, I think she, the governor should ask the emir where he wants to be. I'm very sure the emir has a house in Lagos where he could stay and be comfortable instead of taking him to one remote area where I don't, I don't know. I, I, I have heard it, uh, Madam Kemi, I have heard it said among the conversation going on that he actually doesn't have a right to determine where he wants to stay. Now, but your family, of course. So, as you know, the report said that they allowed, he has actually said reportedly that he would rather go to Lagos. His family was allowed, but the security operative, so it is said, said that, but this one about you yourself, we're not at liberty to accede to your request. All right. But I, I, another issue is that I don't like the... The, the, the parts, the body language of the president concerning this issue. <laughs> I think the president should say something. And the president about... will say, which one is my own inside? It's, uh, it's a state affair. I, it's a I, local I, government I, I, affair. Are you the spokesman of the president? But it's the rules. It's the rules you people put down. That what? That is a <laughs> local government affair. How can you say that? How can you say that, Yori? You can't say but that. Kind uh, as long. It's all right. <laughs> Sorry, Madam Kemi. Okay, let me go back to my friend, Dr. Yori, 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 uh -huh. Please, you cannot say that. W w what can you I said, not say? You said earlier that I was in government and I'm a lawyer. Yes. The, the point is this. If anything is going to affect the territorial integrity of Nigeria, the security of this country, the president must speak out. You said that the police, who owns the police? You said the state security service or the so-called DSS, which is nowhere in the constitution. What you have in the constitution is SSS, number two. You have the, the civil defense corps, like I saw. They were there. They were there. Who owns them? Who controls them? No. Yes, sir. Who controls them, Yori? Who controls them? So, in this, way, so, in this way, you have brought the president into the matter. I'm saying that he's the chief security officer of the federation. You see, he's the commander in chief. But this is the problem. This is the problem yeah, with lawyers. There is no way. This listen, is the problem listen, with lawyers. Listen, Yuri. Again, you are flying somebody out of Kano at 7 p.m., 8 p.m. Suppose anything has happened. Suppose anything has happened. The helicopter from Abuja to uh, Lafia. If anything has happened, what would you have said? I hear you. Fast and it. again, somebody asked. Let me ask, there was a question somebody asked, mm. uh, and let me re reply to that. In this country, there has been arbitrariness. There has been misuse of power. It, 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 the government of a state can remove the chairman of local government mm -hmm. without recourse to the constitution. And the courts have made pronouncement. You were elected the same way the chairman was elected. How will you feel, just in the past, 
the president could not remove a governor, but could use three or six legislators out of 24 to remove a governor. Should we continue that way? Uh, but, uh, well, you, and, they, and the point that I wanted to... It's just that uh, Chanusi will not be ready to, to challenge the constitutionality of his dethronement. Yes. But the, 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 the trampling over his fundamental rights, as a trend in Chapter 4, mm -hmm. Section 35 on the Constitution, mm -hmm. must never go on challenge. And in any case, there are lawyers there, there waiting. Are, okay. I, I and Mahmoud, uh, uh, the middle past president of the NBA, uh, my brother, my father, no, and many others are there. Will, I think you'll be hearing from them pretty soon. Indeed. One looks forward to hearing from them. But this is the problem with you lawyers, because you say it from here. What's the problem with you journalists? What's the problem with you journalists? Let me just tell you what I mean. Yes. Look, this is seen as a state affair. Technically, state affair? Yes. With national and international implications? Uh, well, it is said, for instance, that the president could not have removed, you know, uh, former Emir Sanusi. Right no, or wrong? Could not have removed him. Could not have removed him. Yes. Uh, uh, but without, uh, without, without, without... It takes removed. a governor. Excuse, excuse me. You should mm -hmm. have said without the concurrence or without okay. the endorsement of the governor. The, okay. Adam, let me bring Adams in. Good morning, Adams. Good morning, Uncle Yori. Thank you for calling in, sir. Yeah, thank you, sir. Uncle Yori, I want to make a statement, and I want, I want everybody listening to this program to listen and understand very, very well. You see, the problem about Nigeria is we are always very sentimental on how we treat issues. We just jump into our screen, we just say things without necessarily following the trend from the past. I am not saying what Ganduje did is right. Ganduje is very, very wrong for what he did. But please, I want us to also know that the way the Emir is going about doing things is equally wrong. You are an Emir. You are not a journalist. You are not a politician. You are an Emir. You don't just go on national television and be saying things for same sake. This same Emir, when he was a CDN governor, he said a lot of things about the House of Assembly that they are consuming 25% of our budget, and he couldn't defend it. He said 40 billion was missing. Later he said 20 billion. Later he said 1.5 billion. You are an enemy. You, you can instigate crisis with the way you go about. You can call the governor. You can talk to the governor. You can't keep on criticizing, oh, the North are poor, the North are this. You, okay, what will you do? How are we going to go forward? You are a father figure. You don't just make into politics and okay. embarrass yourself. Thank you very much, uh, Adams. I really appreciate your call. Um, thank you very much. Without prejudice to some of the things that have been said, and that is, it has been said here, Fassi even called the former M.A. loquacious, but we accept because he was outspoken and was not shy. Um, but how about the principle of the punishment fitting the crime? You know, I, we, we, and uh, I, I know that Fassi is still boiling over. The, the point that we made before we went, went over there, the president could not have removed uh, the emir. It was, if, if, because quickly people will get up, all the lawyers included, that, no, 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 stay in your lane, Mr. President. No, 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 you have no right, you have no power. You... So the guy that has the power did it. But and we're now saying... How did he do it? Uh, well, how did he do it? Uh, that's what they shall be talking about later on. So, I but, mean, but I, I'm sure the, nobody... The one we're talking about here is after the event, after the deed has been done, yeah. to now try to humiliate, you know, totally... If that were possible, but I don't know uh, the extent to which that is going to be done. Rubbing his face in the dirt, as it were, whether that was intended or not, I don't know. I don't know whether it's sometimes. Uh, Fassi was talking about power corrupting and absolute power corrupting absolutely. It, it might well be that the state government, as it says, has no hand in it. But once it has started the chain, you never know where it's going to go. That yeah, is yeah, what, yeah. that is what did we're you believe, trying to. Do you believe that? Well, I can, all I can say is that that is what was said. It's for, other, it's for commentators to say whether they believe or and not. And that's what we're questioning. So we cannot allow this kind of act to continue. We must question it. We must stop it. But as Fassi said, yes. who, who, on whose behalf were those security people, including the police, the NSS, the, 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 the SSS, the DSS, the Civil Defense Corps, who was the ultimate authority of those people? The Commissioner of Justice have just refuted us 
deny the fact that the state was the one who did it. So we're saying whether it is the federal government or the state operators, I'm talking about the police and SSS now, or DSS, if they were the one, what they did is wrong. Look, I mean, the young man that I just spoke talked about um, Sanusi as a person. Mm. Nobody is coming here to discuss that. Mm. That is not the discourse for today. The concern now is an action had been taken. Yes. And that action is wrong. And as a people, we must collectively Well, when you say it is wrong, uh, how can you say it is wrong unless you are following former President Obasanjo, who said it was undeserved? No. He didn't even say it was wrong. No, no, he no. said the action was undeserved, whatever he meant by that. What? Okay, how do you justify arresting, because they claim they didn't arrest. They said they didn't okay. arrest. Okay, bundling and taking... They didn't bundle, though. What did they do? No. Flying. Uh -huh. Okay, it's flying uh -huh. the former emir to an obscure place. And they were able to agree that the place they are taking him to, for at least in the first instance, was not deserving of him. Why did they take didn't him there? Didn't they know that before? In the first place. Um, uh, uh, I have someone on the phone. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Joshua Inire Walidi, good morning, sir. Uncle Yori, good morning. Um, Thank you for calling. I greet you and I greet your guest. Thank you. Thank you. I, I hope it is time for us to start having the right conversation and I'm putting the right value and worth on human life. I, I think our political leaders and religious leaders may be represented by the Emir. They don't know how badly the situation is with Nigerians. I sympathize with the Emir, as people are saying. He has a house in Lagos. It's more comfortable. But let all those that are in power know that power is transient, and one day they will all be accountable for their actions, whether by banishment or by consequence. The truth is Nigeria is in a state where human life is next to nothing. It is zero. Look at the place they banished him to. He couldn't live there. They are now looking for where to go to. That is the territory of Nigeria. So there's somebody who cannot live somewhere in Nigeria, yet Nigerians are living in those places. Let those that are in power begin to understand that the gods they call abroad or above is them. They are the gods that their people are looking up to, they are praying to. All their corrupt uh, practices and everything ends in one thing. Consequence for all of them, whether it is Sanusi or Ganduje or anyone, there's none of them that can escape their consequence. One day, they will pay for it in different ways. Nigerians are suffering. Let the good spread around. That is the message of this Sanusi saga. As far as I'm concerned, give what and value to human life. Wherever you are banished to in Nigeria, whether it's a village or, or whatever, you can have water, you can live a meaningful life there. That is what we, we should be talking to. Humanity is more important than all these positions that these people are fighting and killing themselves over. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for calling in. Ordinarily. You know, it's even instructive, sorry to interrupt you, it's yeah. even instructive that the place he was initially banished to, the emir there came out and says that, no, 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 this place is not good. We don't have love. We don't have roads. We don't have water. We don't have light. And that goes back to the point Joshua just made. That, that the gentleman yeah. was saying, uh, okay, I, I understand that's something of a picture of where the place was. You're, 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 ordinarily. So you, that there are still such places. You, you, there are many. And they have many, emirs. Many. Even the Jegule. Even the Makoko. So why send a former emir to that no, place if it wasn't see, personal? Point if made, it wasn't personal, the, the, the point to be made is this: it's punitive. Yes. If if he had decided to stay anywhere, you have riverine areas and others where there's no uh, potable water, drink, uh, uh, water that uh, you can really consume and others. If he had chosen to, but in this case, they have infringed on the fundamental rights. They have been framed on chapter on uh, section 35 of the constitution. That's all we are saying. We are not saying that anybody cannot live anywhere. As long as it's within this country, okay. and even if it's outside the country, as long as you have visa to, to that country, you, are, you can stay anywhere you like, but not against your wish. Mm. Okay. Shay, the lawyers of um, the former Emir uh, have said that, um, at least I've read in the paper that much, that they're given the authorities 24 hours to 
you know, do the, do the right thing. The needful. You do the needful. Yeah. Otherwise, they might have to go to court, court yeah. to, 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 to contest these issues. Yeah. And um, as I said, uh, Falano SAN has said that um, he doesn't think this will stand, you know, in, in court. Uh, let, let's hear it from uh, Mr. Adeola in the UK. Good morning, Mr. Adeola. Hello, good morning. Thank you for calling in. Go ahead, please. Good morning, Uncle Yori. Good, good morning, morning gentlemen. Good, good morning. morning. Yeah, my name is Adio. I'm calling from the United Kingdom, precisely Manchester. Okay. Go ahead, please. Um, yeah. You see, Nigerian uh, politicians, they've turned themselves to God. Not even small God, to a big God. They want everybody to be worshipping them. What happened to Shanusi can happen to everybody. This is a high time that everybody must stood up, Hada Yoruba, Aousa, Igbo, to fight for our right. A friend of mine called me uh, yesterday that he's a journalist and he covers uh, West Africa. He said, look, what happened to Shanusi can only happen in Nigeria. It can never happen anywhere in the world. We have the coin there. The politicians take permission from the coin, and we have other uh, realities in the world. But Nigerian politicians have turned themselves to small God. Thank you. Thank you very much. There will be different kinds of uh, monarchies, as you also uh, know. That's the system there, and we have Ceremonial. The, the, yes, we, we have, you know, that kind of, uh, 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 exactly. So, uh, so um, as, the t as the clock is ticking Seeking. down, yeah. we're, we're looking at it that we're not talking about the dethronement, the removal. Yes. That is separate. Yeah. But the <clears throat> subhuman treatment, look, you don't have to be an emir to be scandalized by the treatment that was given. Any ordinary citizen of Nigeria will say, no way, you can't put me here. That's an ordinary citizen. Yeah. Doesn't have any blue blood at all. Yeah. So that that was done, I think that is the question now. Say, shouldn't the, whatever, the punishment match the crime? And if you have established that the crime is insubordination, mm. so this is the price of insubordination? And I'm reminded of Obasan just saying that, uh, well, you, you, you have paid, paid the price. price. Yeah. I'm, I'm still trying to no, unravel no, no, that Obasanjo part. About the initial banishment. In the first, in I mean, sorry, no, detriment. Detriment. Not banishment. Oh, so, sorry, I'm being told that a certain. Uh, is it Dr. Busayomi in Abekuta? Did I get that right? Yeah, I did. Dr. Busayomi in Abekuta, good morning. Good morning, sir. I'm Uncle Yori. Thank you very much for calling in, sir. Uh, good morning, uh, Dr. Yusuf and my. Uh, Mr. Adiemo. Mr. Adiemo. my junior brother. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, um, Listening to what everybody has said so far, and from my own particular observation, I'm well-traveled all over the world. I found out that in Nigeria, we have the problem of leaders. Our leaders are not doing the right thing. It is high time we go back to the drawing board. This is the very thing that the former emir used to say quite freely. Yes. But... You know, when things like this are happening to people like Sanusi, I'm not supporting him. I'm not saying what he did is right. But when we have leaders and we have what is called the law, everybody is below the law. The law is above everybody. Let the <laughs> right things be done. As the former caller said, it can never happen anywhere. Nigeria has been rated the most religious country in the world so far. Okay. And an emir, a religious leader, is being banished in that manner. Mm -hmm. I don't know. My, from my own experience, when I'm outside Nigeria and I pray to God, I get answers like I'm running my water. But here in Nigeria, you have to banish all manner of forces, including the political forces. <laughs> <laughs> bind, bind all sorts of forces, including yes. the political forces. Forgive exactly. me, we've run out of time. Forgive me, but thank you very, very much, Dr. Buzhayo. Can I drop this? Uh, very, very briefly, please. Briefly. Yes. I have to say that it's important that we learn from this. I believe that if the Emir were more closer to his people, mm. it probably would have been more difficult for the governor 
to have done what he did. And I think this is a lesson to all leaders, particularly traditional leaders. The king of Ashanti came here sometime and said that it seemed to him that our traditional leaders are not creative enough in raising money and affecting their people. Okay. Because if you really want power, you must get it from the people. And these people are closer to the people. So they should find a way of getting that power so that these political people will not treat them the way they treat them. Okay, interesting Sorry. point you make. Nobody will try that with the Ujali or with the Wilan. Okay. Again, leave it like that. Mm -hmm. let's, leave, let's leave it at that cryptic, enigmatic level. <laughs> yes. Nobody will pull this kind of a number with the Ujali. No way. Nobody. Well, Nobody born of a woman. Thank you very much, we'll try that. Chief Dr. Uh, Fasi Yusuf. Uh, actually, Ba Morfi. Ba Agwimo. Ba Of Ijebuland. Thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Fasi Yusuf. Uh, thank you also, uh, Mr. Uh, Shei Adeyemo. Thank you. Uh, that's our program today. Please join us tomorrow for a fresh edition. I am Iori Folani. Bye-bye for now.